By the looks of it, the LAN turtle is just a USB Ethernet adapter. But something more sinister is going on here. In actual fact, the turtle is a sysadmin's worst nightmare. It can be directly connected to a victim network via the Ethernet port and then to a victim computer or other power source, after which it will run a pre-programmed module. There's modules to spoof DNS queries, get a interpreter shell, tunnel into the network. There's a lot to choose from. Having no Hack5 branding and appearing indifferent from any other USB Ethernet adapter makes it very covert. To non-leet folk, this would just be a thing among other things plugged into a computer. Being me, I decided to open it up and see what's inside. Two screws later and we're in. There's not much here apart from a reset button just in case you screw things up. Interestingly, the LAN Tesla runs the same chip as the Arduino Yun. However, given the Yun is more expensive, there's not much point in trying to get that to work here. Apart from that, I'm not going to pretend I know much of what's going on here, so let's move on. Setup was super simple. The LAN Tesla comes with an information card which was all I needed to get it up and running. If you buy it part of the Hack5 Fields Kit, you'll also get a manual which contains noob-friendly guides to the Turtle's basic operation. This also came in handy, as you'll see in a sec. After SSHing into the LAN Tesla, you'll be presented with a basic interface where you can change some settings as well as download and configure modules. Modules are how you get stuff done. They are small programs which run on the Turtle, allowing you to perform a variety of tasks. Modules are easily downloaded, there are about 20 to choose from, they are open source and I'm sure you could write one yourself if you're up to it. Modules are also easy to set up, simply navigate to the config file and input the parameters. Each of the modules are well documented online, though this was when I realised the interface doesn't like NumPad for some reason, and yes, NumLock was on. Though here I configured a DNS spoof, all traffic to say tonic.com should be redirected to localhost, then I enabled the module, DNS spoof, and replugged the turtle. And it works. Well, kind of. As I discovered here, my ISP blocks DNS spoofing by default. However, this isn't a limitation of the LAN turtle. I used this example to get across the points that this is not a tool for newbies. You can't just use the LAN turtle blindly and expect to get op. You need to be clever about the scripts you use and implement them properly. Inopportunely, after the DNS spoof, the LAN turtle started acting weird. It wouldn't connect to lanturtle.com and attempts to configure modules were met with errors. Googling the errors yielded no results, so I think this is an isolated issue. Switching computers and trying to toggle different options had no effect. So I consulted the manual. Like it said, I opened the device and held the reset button down for three seconds while plugging it in. I then went to its web interface and uploaded the firmware I found online. After a few restarts, it sprung into life. I'm not quite sure why this happened, maybe the DNS spoofing being blocked had something to do with it, but it's good to know a hard reset is quite straightforward. And to be honest, if you're the target market for this, spending five minutes to reflash some firmware really shouldn't spook you. Besides, the error didn't resurface after I did the exact same thing for a second time. Something to note is that the LAN turtle doesn't have to be connected to a computer to be of use. Here I have the LAN turtle connected to a power bank, which should provide me about 48 hours of juice. So here I have the LAN turtle set up to provide remote access to the network it's connected to via OpenVPN, making possible a remote pen test. All in all, the LAN turtle is an interesting tool. There isn't anything to compare it to as I really couldn't find any alternatives. That being said, you could probably hack together something similar with a Raspberry Pi, but that's a project for another day. So should you buy one at $50? Well, if you're an actual pen tester, then I think the answer is an obvious yes. I really can't see any downsides in that situation. It's discreet and featureful. But if you're a hobbyist, then the LAN turtle is quite blatantly more of a luxury than a necessity, as you're probably not going to be using it to pen test. However, it does have other uses too. I'm mainly going to be using mine to SSH into my home network from wherever. That way, I don't have to have my computer on all the time. So, in conclusion, the LAN turtle is a great addition to any arsenal. The teething issues I faced really wouldn't put me off getting one. So, thanks for watching, guys. For full disclosure, Hack5 did provide the LAN turtle as a review copy, but with no strings attached. I think I've succeeded in giving it an honest review. So, remember to like this video if you liked it, share and subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter, I'm at Satonic, and stay tuned for more hacking videos. In particular, I'm going to be doing a head to head of the Wi Fi Pineapple Tetra versus the Nano, so you definitely won't want to miss that.